All right, so I've gone ahead and glued down our metal plate here using some hot glue so that it stays in place. And I've also installed the trucks back into their uh, receptacles. So on the decoder, we're going to be using a total of three functions because we have three lights. This is a four function decoder. And so that means that the fourth function, which is the pink wire, we're not going to need whatsoever. And the remaining three functions, which are going to start with function one on the green wire, function two on the violet wire, and function three on the brown wire are what we're going to be using. So since we're not going to be using the pink wire at all, I'm just going to clip it off entirely. And the remaining three wires, I'm going to clip back relatively far, rather close to the decoder, since we're not going to be needing them um, as the LEDs have the legs on them or the leads on them themselves. And obviously the magnet wire is going to be a lot easier to route and a lot easier to hide than the larger wires that you're going to find on the decoder. So we're going to clip all those back and I'm going to leave the blue wire alone. So the violet, the green, and the brown I'll clip back to about there. And the pink wire I will clip off entirely. I don't want that getting in the way during the installation, so I'll set that aside. The ground wire we are going to need to install our keep alive, so I'm not going to touch that. And I'm also not going to touch the blue wire, which is going to be used for the keep alive as well as all the lighting as well. So with our function wires clipped down, the next thing I'm going to do is strip and tin them so we can install our resistors. Alright, so I have now gone ahead and stripped and tinned these wires. What I'll do next is I have some 364 string tubing that I'll be cutting some sections off of, in this case three sections, and I'll apply those onto the wire here so that when we install our resistors, we can cover over any exposed wire. Alright, so with the shrink tubing installed, I can now grab my resistors and install them as well. I want to be sure to grab them with something that is not my fingers because obviously since they're very small and also we're going to be soldering with them, the heat transference, I don't want that going into my hand. I'd rather have that going into something like a tweezer or a small piece of needle nose pliers. So since I've tinned my resistor and also the wire, when I go to solder them together, it should be a rather painless and quick process. Alright, so with our resistor soldered in, the next thing that we're going to do is take our shrink tubing and pull it over those joints. And once our joints are covered, we can use our soldering iron or if you have a heat source, you can just gently touch to it or hover around it and the heat from the iron will shrink the tubing down. So with that done, we don't have to worry about any short circuits or anything hazardous like that happening here. We'll also have to do it on the other side once we connect the rest of our wires. But before we dig into that, what we're going to have to do is trim off the extra leads from our LEDs. All of the red wires that we have from our three LEDs can be tied together, but each individual green wire, which is going to be your negative, will have to be separated out to be used with each individual function. So what I'm going to do is reconnect the cap back onto the top of our caboose. 
And with that done, what I'll do is make sure that I do this one first so that I don't get confused with the other two. So I'll separate out my wires. And then I'll clip the excess off. And then I'll take all of my red wires and bundle them together and clip them to the same length. Twist them together. And since when I twisted them together they came to different lengths, I'll go ahead and give them one more clip to make sure that they're all the exact same length. Now when it comes to surface mount LEDs, um, these magnet wires that we have on here, they are covered with a very, very, very thin insulation. So in order to remove that insulation, you can't use something like a wire stripper where you'll cut the wires. So instead, the way it's designed is if you apply heat to it, it will either dissolve or it will shrink back. Uh, similarly to the other wire, but in a more extreme way. So the way that we're going to tin these wires is I'll once again take a small bit of solder off my reel here. I'll tin my tip and I'll be sure to put a lot of solder on here, but not too much that it falls off. And then I'll apply it to the wire and keep feeding in more solder. And what this does is it dissolves the insulation into your solder. So when you clean your iron off, you should see that there's nothing obviously in the iron, but you're left with a nice crisp solder point here. And obviously this is all three wires all put together into one, so we don't have to solder them all individually, which makes this really handy. And they're all bundled together nicely and solder together as well, so you'll have good conductivity between all of the wires. Next what I'll do is I'll take our single function that we have from the cap, and I'll do the same thing. Or I'll feed solder onto my iron, and then just keep feeding that solder in until I get a nice clean, insulation-free wire right here. And then I'll go ahead and install this onto the decoder. We'll use function one, why not? So I'll have my helping hand help me out here once again. And I'll cut off another section of insulation, shrink tubing. I'll once again put this on the wire side because we don't have a lot of room to work with on the resistor, obviously. All right, so now that that's on there, I'll grab my tweezers to help me out to get this joint. And very carefully, My joint. All right. With this stuff, it's usually a good idea to give it a little tug, not too much, or you'll tear the wire. But if you can give it a little tug and it doesn't come off, then that usually means that it's on there pretty good. So I'll bring my insulation down here and use my iron to shrink it down.
And that's one function down. I'll go ahead and repeat this for the other two. All right, so now we have all of our wires hooked up and we're ready to, to go into the last stages of the assembly process here. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be putting into this guy is a KA2, which I have right here. Um, and in order to do that, what we're gonna have to do is splice in the blue and black with white stripe wires and we're going to splice those into the same blue and black with white stripe wires that we have on our decoder. And in addition to the blue wires being connected, we also have to hook in our reds from our LEDs. And once we're finished with that, then we're just going to button everything up and test it and make sure it works. So we're going to start by taking our Keep Alive and clipping off most of the leads. We're not going to need a lot. I'll leave about an inch to an inch and a half on this end and about the same over here. Once again, we'll strip and tin each side and then apply some shrink wrap once we get everything where we're going to be buttoning it up. So I'm going to start by hooking the ground wire together first because I don't have to hook in a second set of wires. So I've already cut off a small piece of shrink tubing here and I'm just going to splice them together, line up the shrink tubing, and then shrink it together using the soldering iron. For the blue wire and also the red wires, what we're going to do is run the Keep Alive and the red wires together in one direction and then have the shrink tubing on this side going the other direction so that when we splice them together they can all fit under the shrink tubing at the same time. All right, so everything's all wired up. The last step is just to button everything up. So we'll pack everything in here in a way that hopefully doesn't interfere with many of the windows, if any at all, and uh, call it a day.
All right, ladies and gents, that's actually all how it's done. Uh, as you can see, I actually brought this from upstairs from our uh, test run of it. And I don't know, it might be a little difficult to see, but the lights are still on. <laughs> so we had enough time to bring it upstairs and reset up all the equipment to shoot this and it's still running, um, which has been at least, I think a minute or two at this point. So if you're worried about rough track, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it anymore, that's for sure. We hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know if you want to convert your N-Scale cabooses or even HO. Uh, we'd love to see it, so send us some pictures, send us your own videos if you do one of these yourself, and we'll see you next time.